The exploration of space will go ahead. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. For we meet in an hour of change, in a decade of hope, in an age of knowledge. Even though I realize that this is, in some measure, an act of faith and vision, for we do not now know what benefits await us. But if I were to say, my fellow citizens, that we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away a giant rocket carrying all the equipment needed. The exploration of space will go ahead. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond. We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Good evening, young explorers. I'm Rokshani Vijayasiri, the Divisional Manager of Biomedical and Earth Science Division of SETS OUSL. Let me first introduce SETS. It is Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, Sri Lanka. It is a part of an international organization aimed at promoting space exploration and development through educational and engineering projects. As a member of SEDS or USL chapter, I would like to announce that currently we are producing articles through our SEDS or USL page and uh, there are YouTube programs through our SEDS or USL YouTube channel. In the part to the success, SEDS or USL in collaboration with Biomedical and Earth Science Division of SEDS SL has organized an event, Neophora 2021. The Neophora 21 is a competition which will open up to undergraduates, available to all undergraduates from state or private universities who will compete by researching and producing nutritional supplements for astronauts by using seaweed and algae. This will be happening as a practical event and also done according to the global community's health and safety conditions because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Event will be held according to the terms and conditions which are provided by the organizing committee with the supervision of a panel of judges. And uh, let me welcome our honorable chief guest, uh, sorry, guest, guest speaker, uh, Mr. Kal uh, sorry, Dr. Kalpa Samarakon uh, with a PhD at uh, JNU Korea. And he is the senior lecturer at Institute of uh, Combinatorial Advanced Research and Education, KDU Kea, uh, General Sir John Kotalawala Defense University. So, uh, welcome you, sir, for this uh, webinar. This is our second webinar of this webinar series. Welcome you, sir, for this uh, webinar. Okay, thank you uh, very much for joining. 
So let me uh, share my presentation now. Is it uh, okay? Now everyone can see? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for since for yourself inviting for me to talk here. And it's quite impressive that uh, you have chosen a title for the competitors who are going to organize a competition uh, which uh, targeting some uh, infrastructural development based on um, algae and especially for targeting astronauts or space foods. So uh, I'll try to talk about some uh, little bit uh, knowledge uh, that I have, I think, on marine uh, algae. And uh, rather than I would like to talk uh, as a senior lecturer, I would uh, talk as a scientist here. So uh, as far as I know that uh, this topic is mostly relevant to your uh, subject as uh, the algae-based foods for astronauts and inside to marine biotechnology and perspective. So why I choose this topic? Because uh, last week I saw that you have been uh, having a webinar a discussion with Dr. Heleni and Jisuru. I think they have uh, taught you something about that, uh, how to make uh, IT, uh, how to get IT and some uh, important aspects of the uh, innovation. And I also understood that uh, Isuru uh, has been uh, presenting you some of the uh, space foods, which are which are uh, kind of uh, you know the packing and how to preparation, how to less the weight that they should transport, and kind of uh, knowledge I think you have. So based on uh, the title I choose. I'd like to uh, give some uh, knowledge about the marine biotechnology. And I try to give some simple um, identification of algae. And this is mostly important, I guess, that you must, must know about the algae, basically when you are designing any promising, uh, uh, promising uh, some uh, metaphysical uh, things. And you better to know what kind of algae that you are available with uh, nature and uh, how they can benefit your uh, project and what are the properties and how they can be uh, involved with your research. And I try to give some classification and I also in Sri Lanka and uh, knowledge about the macroalgae uh, or microalgae and microalgae and uh, some of the important aspects uh, and the challenges later on. So let me uh, introduce the biotechnology first, because I think you are engaged with something that's similar to a topic that I'm talking here. The biotechnology is simply mentioned as uh, any technological application you would like to involve with the lucid biological systems, living organisms or derivatives or thereof, or to make or modify products or process for specific use. So this is a similar to that what you are having now. The competitors who uh, need to get some living organisms like algae or some uh, uh, tissues, uh, as the tissues or some extracts, which might uh, try to get a uh, modification or formulation to usable product or application. So the same uh, thing can be explained as with the marine biotechnology, where that you can use the marine uh, samples. Uh, as a biological resources, which you have come from the, uh, which, it, which you can get from the marine environment rather than from the terrestrial environment. So the biotechnology mostly will apply uh, scientific and engineering principles here, and you must uh, process them to make uh, useful uh, product and services. And sometimes this kind of uh, research uh, and uh, the subjects will not only that you can uh, use uh, one way, another way you can uh, use uh, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary uh, uh, subjects will be uh, come uh, along with your knowledge because uh, the making something uh, um, technological uh, important product uh, like nutraceutical or pharmaceutical or cosmeceutical. So you must know the around you, the knowledge about biology, chemistry. Uh, physics, engineering, sometimes agriculture, 
nanotechnology, informatics, or any kind of knowledge that you may need. So let me uh, give you some information about our planet of Earth. I think may you uh, know already these things are very common. But I must uh, give, and I think it's my responsibility to give you some uh, background of our Earth. As you know that 71% uh, of Earth's surface is covered by oceans, and this will be the largest ecosystem in the planet. And you see that 97% of the water uh, is existing uh, in our environment. And another very good point is that most of the world population, more than 50% of the world population uh, around us, around the ocean and within 60 kilometers of the uh, ocean or sea shore. So uh, why we should know that uh, our ocean, because it's a very huge uh, and uh, important uh, area, the ecosystem where we want to know, uh, and we, we can compare it with our biomass because biomass is something that energy available or the organic matter that available, diet organic matter that available in a, in a tropic level. So when you compare with the land and the marine, you must see that the limited biomass available in the land and the marine, it will be more than that uh, in the portion that you'll see here. Uh, we believe that at the moment and the research where that we uh, investigated, only 15% of the marine uh, environment has been explored and more than 85% of the marine environment or ecosystem has not been uh, explored or untapped or discovered. So it just, you can imagine how big the marine environment and compare with the land. And here you see that there are about 200,000 species are known already. And always um, 1,000 to 1,500 new species, marine species are coming identified in each year and estimated over 1.4 to 1.6 million species are around in the marine environment. And uh, always the ocean uh, we talk about here, uh, when in terms of the algae, I would say that uh, algae can be uh, uh, marine algae or uh, freshwater algae. But however, I think I must give you the background of the ocean. And ocean is considered another Nature's Medicine Cabinet. He's the one of the uh, writer uh, uh, given that uh, nice uh, uh, word that it's because importance of the marine environment uh, as a major reservoir for the bioactive compounds and that have potential to be applied in several fields such as medicine or food. That is very clear uh, point. And why we need to know that marine algae, or why we need that marine algae are so important? Because as we know, the characteristics of the marine environment, basically, uh, if you can imagine, it's a very uh, vast range of temperatures or degree of temperature and salinity and light pressure and the, some of the nutrients are very, you know, uh, deficient in some extent, some levels of the ocean. So kind of sp special importance will give uh, the board rate of uh, values to the marine organism. Uh, there are a lot of marine organisms, I will come uh, later on, and uh, when they are evolving, some of the protective mechanisms and the metabolites they may gain. So based on that point, uh, most of the researchers and the scientists would like to follow marine uh, organisms because they have a new uh, exploration. They, they, they are trying to new, uh, identify new metabolites where they can uh, build because a lot of uh, stressors especially uh, enable them to uh, make new compounds, uh, we call biological active compounds. So in recent years, there are a lot of, uh, you know, research have been uh, following and doing some, uh, you know, uh, finding this, uh, finding some of the marine uh, derived bioactive compounds. You might uh, can see a lot of papers are coming in the uh, journal articles. A lot of uh, marine environment is being used for research. If you see that marine life uh, as a resource here, so there, there would be like a, a, a technology that we, we call about the biotechnology. This kind of a toolbox here. We go for the biodiscovery. We need to go the molecular biology and we need the nanotechnology, bioinformatics and omics, or we call it metagenomics, proteomics. So kind 
kind of biotechnological application we need to identify which are the marine uh, resources and how they can be useful for our application. Sometimes we need to culture them because some of the marine uh, samples we could not uh, get or harvest from the direct uh, ocean. Uh, then we, you know, some of the, the limitation legal issues are there so you can't go and directly collect from the sea. So you must have a system to culture in the laboratory or as uh, the way that you want to decide the cult cultivation of the marine organisms is one of the big uh, industry at the moment. So that kind of uh, culture will give you a lot of services as you see in the picture. And the products you may can count any num any way of any type of uh, drugs, biofuels, electricity, food enzymes, compounds, and any kind of uh, value addition can be gained from the marine system. Okay, so and there are another uh, type of uh, five growth factors. Uh, growth uh, sectors are associated with the marine system. Actually, the marine biotechnology is the one of that uh, aspect uh, I just uh, explained you. The, there will be another more uh, growth sectors because uh, associated with the marine system, you know the aquaculture system as just I mentioned. It's a very big industry in the other countries. In Sri Lanka, we don't see that kind of aquaculture system around us, but in, in, in Asia Pacific region, especially Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, South Korea, China, and Japan, and sometimes uh, in Australia also, they tend to do a lot of aquaculture industry because farming fishers and shellfishers and some of the marine plants, they want to do some industrial application. They will not go for the direct uh, collection from the sea. They may uh, go for the aquaculture industry and we collect the samples and for their uh, application. And coastal and maritime uh, tourism is one of another industry and renewable energy, uh, which also uh, recently we've been uh, encountered in Sri Lanka. We use uh, wind waves or kind of biofuel technology. Uh, where we can apply for our economic aspects. And another uh, point is the mineral resource that is also got a uh, sector among the uh, blue, uh, five blue uh, those sectors. And you see uh, Sri Lanka also trying to uh, dig some uh, you know, mineral oil from uh, Sri Lankan ocean. And that's also kind of a project that they are we have. And I'd like to talk about uh, in this slide a uh, little bit about sort uh, of a marine biomass market. Actually, sort means you may know it's a management tool, which are we can uh, count that uh, how we can get to analyze this uh, market, marine based market. Uh, let's let me see that first one is a strength. Uh, you see that various marine biot resources are available around us and it would be a massive environment and you would uh, get a lot of uh, marine uh, products uh, in compounds by few materials functional metabolites so that kind of marine uh, bioresources are vast you can do a lot of application based on the uh, marine uh, bioresources and also abundantly and which showed an excellent uh, biological activity uh, i will uh, go later on that uh, what are the biological activity that we find from that ma marine organisms and uh, advancement of marine biotechnology always uh, going ahead because a lot of technological innovations are there and a lot of countries are coming uh, to invest marine biotechnology because that much of opportunity is gained from the marine biotechnology so advancements are always there and what are the opportunities we find actually uh, when you uh, think about that pollution of land and mud it is a very big uh, issue uh, at the moment in not only in Sri Lanka but also in other country in the globe a lot of pollutions are being collected uh, and uh, put to the solid the solid uh, waste and most of these solid waste are uh, in up in the ocean sometimes so that kind of environmental damage from the land will not be able to go for the uh, marine uh, not like that marine environment that will be easily damaged and degraded and consumer perception also there because opportunity kind of you know people are interested to go for the uh, marine based products uh, in some countries there are a lot of uh, shops are being opening and uh, only the marine based uh, the nutraceuticals or the cosmeceuticals are available and they are always increasing their interest to uh, get some uh, new product and new uh, knowledge uh, from the new uh, marine environment and you know that sometimes uh, the biggest problem in population in, among the humans are aging society. So 
people would like to get uh, you know medicines uh, based on the, the you know the strength of our health sector people are being uh, getting uh, you know uh, less diseases sometimes and you get higher energy age in society so this is also opportunity that we can go for the marine based market and both uh, go rapid in functional foods cosmetic market and i explain i think uh, with different opportunities are with the marine environment what are the weaknesses that we have many unconfirmed features as explained more than 85 percent of the marine ocean uh, we haven't been uh, studied or explored so they are not to be discovered so need, we need the large initial investments uh, we need a lot of uh, energy the finance support to explore uh, other that, otherwise uh, you can't uh, just imagine and go and collect uh, by resources uh, this is a uh, uh, quite uh, this uh, will be uh, the, the the you need to have a high capital to invest kind of this uh, application and it's difficult to explore and secure sometimes uh, if you bring some marine uh, bio resources you must have a uh, special uh, laboratory area facility to keep uh, and uh, do some research a kind of uh, difficulties are available and you must know that kind of uh, research are available with, uh, around the marine space market and also threats here with us uh, global economic slum because you no know, country can uh, develop country can uh, do this kind of uh, investment but uh, developing countries like sri lanka we are still uh, trying to uh, see that what are the opportunities around us in the ocean so the global economic crisis like covid issues and the kind of uh, social issues are there and probably you know that some of the, uh, the marine diversity are also being damaged by the uh, solid waste which are we dump and all, always that we end up in ocean and always uh, you know there is the resource competition and which kind of threats are around us okay so the vision of the future always we look uh, when you when you compare that uh, 10 20 years before the land biomass was more uh, significant and they used for lots of, of the drug development uh, food application, uh, well, or energy users, and any other aspect that we look. But in marine biomass, it was very little. Now it's getting more and more, uh, you know, trend, trend, trending for uh, marine biomass rather than using land biomass. A lot of opportunities behind, and I explain all the potential which the marine purposes are uh, useful to uh, invest and get uh, used for the uh, human uh, users. And I also must uh, tell you about the sustainable development goals. This is uh, something beyond that uh, topic. Uh, United Nations has been stipulated uh, 17 goals, we call SDGs. So among the SDGs, the uh, 15th uh, goal is labeled as life below water. So what they want to uh, emphasize here, that goal 14 to uh, there are some, you know, uh, targets they are associated with 159 targets among these 17 uh, SDGs. So conserve and sustainably use the ocean and seas and marine resources for sustainable development. Because uh, many countries and many, you know, scientists and researchers invest a lot to uh, harvest uh, marine resources. So it definitely will uh, one day uh, will take to the marine surfaces. Uh, and the marine environment. So mostly that we must know the conservation and sustainably use them for the future uh, energies. And always we must go for any solution because the marine biotechnology can do a lot of solutions, uh, new way of finding solutions for all solutions to this uh, marine or ocean productivity. So uh, I think I uh, give uh, some uh, important aspects of understanding about the marine life and uh, what kind of marine uh, ecosystem are with us and kind of uh, untapped potential. And we always want to see uh, the application where we want to uh, use for human uh, users. So when you come to this uh, slide, so I just brief uh, what are the marine uh, organisms around in the marine system. So you may know most of the prokaryotes like bacteria, viruses, uh, 
uh, in the marine system and algae uh, and the fungi uh, kind of eukaryotes and seaweeds and sponges kind of uh, lower organisms a lot of uh, varieties are there and invertebrates and the fishes and there are a lot more uh, i think some of them are missed but anyway you may know what are the marine organisms around in the system so what we targeted for the marine based nutraceutical especially we targeted uh, the the the, the valley uh, resources to use uh, some of the bioactive uh, peptides compounds and among them are labeled polysaccharides, proteins, amino acids, uh, phenolic compounds, uh, some they are called prebiotics, uh, terpenoid like compounds, minerals, enzymes, any of the material that uh, functional material you can extract and apply for a lot of beneficial. You know, the lot of uh, medicinal and healthy uh, prospects are being elevated with this kind of material. And you see down uh, in the slide. A lot of you know pharmaceutical application like antigenetics like and oxidants, apoptotic modulation, immunostimulation, cardiovascular benefit, and antibiotic effects. I think uh, if you are thinking about uh, making some nutraceutical uh, as uh, you targeted for the astronauts, I think it's quite a good uh, challenge based on this kind of information. I think I will not give you all the information that you may require, but you can follow some of the, uh, the knowledge that's here. Uh, you can find some way to uh, do uh, formulate the nutraceuticals. So based on that uh, health uh, prospects and what the uh, astronauts require, because astronaut uh, space environment. So when they uh, in their lack of their nutrients, lack of their uh, you know the medicines. So how the nutraceutical will supply them to be uh, you know without harm or without any uh, damage for their body. So then let's see, uh, go for the real topic. Uh, what uh, is ALGA? Actually, you may have a technical name. Uh, ALGA is uh, something that we uh, identify here. You see a lot of pictures uh, I uh, put into the slide. Most of them are diverse group. Uh, ALGA are photosynthetic and eukaryotic organisms uh, found in marine or fresh water they are autotrophic and highly adaptive and to survive in a highly complex and competitive environment and including extreme salinity i think i uh, just uh, mentioned it before and they are live in different variation of temperatures low light intensities and also nutrient deficient uh, habitats so as i explained they Algae are the major uh, players in the ocean uh, and the fresh water, land, uh, water, uh, being primary producers. And they are, uh, you know, the produce rich source of primary metabolites like protein, carbohydrates, lipids, and they also generate uh, secondary metabolites, uh, which are. Uh, which are categorized in four different uh, synthetic pathways. Uh, we label them as a natural products. Mostly the natural products are being uh, generated by the organisms or their uh, symbiotic associations. Sometimes they may want their product, uh, prevent their predation or they may can uh, symbiotic uh, you know, communication, sometimes for their uh, habit uh, adaptation. So kind of functional metabolites, nutrients are associated with is uh, organisms. And the algae are highly diverse and they are in uh, different forms, different sizes. Uh, it's particularly say that some they are cellular or single cell organisms like Isthmina, the Chlorella, or some Zingella you see here, Hematococcus, kind of uh, organisms are microscopic and unicellular. And some of the marine algae are multicellular and which are, you see in the below of this slide. And when we classify them, according to the, the classification, actually there are a lot of uh, uh, science behind the classification, but I, in terms of simple method, a simple way, I will uh, tell you what are the, uh, how the way that we want to classify them. So macro algae, we say as seaweeds, 
uh, and they classify based on their pigmentation and cell uh, material matrices that are how the pigment uh, associated and based on that uh, pigmentation we say that green algae or chlor chlorophyll chlorophyll uh, because they contain chlorophyll a b and some other more uh, different chlorophyll associates and the second uh, algae is red algae it means look that uh, Rhodophacy or rhodophytes, uh, available of phytoprotein, phytocyanin, phytoerythrin, kind of uh, red color, uh, soft red color uh, pigment. And the next one is brown algae, pheophacy or pheophytes. Uh, mostly they have a uh, glucosamine or calcinoid kind of uh, pigment. Actually, these three, uh, this three type of marine algae are for seaweeds. Uh, they are macroscopic, and when we study them, we call phyco phytophytes. Actually, this kind of uh, algae are very common in our ocean. When you go to the micro algae, can be classified as uh, first one is called blue green algae, or we call cyanobacteria. Actually, close to a uh, single cell uh, or kind of uh, cellular uh, network uh, that has, uh, you know, the mostly uh, engaged with a uh, lot of uh, proteins, lipids, and uh, other pigments, especially chlorophyll kind of pigment are there. And when you go to the next uh, microscopic algae called dinoflagellates, uh, dinoface we call. So that's also available in the ocean. And sometimes these are the algae blooms. Sometimes you heard that Toxic uh, algae uh, are available in the uh, system, may in marine and the land. So the dinoflagellates are sometimes most of them are toxic and very useful for our especially cancer research. And the diatoms, Bacillus phyta, also available in the benthic uh, level of ocean, and it also calcified uh, nature and diatom uh, very common. And you see that the kind of picture um, information are available here. A different uh, form of sizes, uh, forms and sizes of the marine uh, algae level. So when you go to the our uh, Sri Lankan uh, geography of ocean in here in this slide, actually uh, the divisions given in the uh, United Nations Convention of the Laws of Sea. According to that, uh, you see that picture in Sri Lanka the coastal area we call baseline uh, next to the baseline is terrestrial sea actually it's around uh, 12 nautical miles uh, from the baseline and if you get the square area it's around uh, 180060 uh, 18, uh, square kilometers and uh, next to the uh, terrestrial sea you see the contiguous uh, zone it's about 24 nautical miles uh, and it's uh, about 19,000 uh, square meter, square kilometers. And the next you see that the larger area, the ocean surface after that contiguous zones, we call the exclusive economic zone. Uh, it's about uh, more, uh, 200 uh, nautical miles. And area would be 400,000 uh, square kilometers. So this uh, area we uh, been getting uh, because of that uh, based on the international law and we can work uh, we can harvest we can uh, apply our any activity within that within that uh, fisheries or anything that we within that trend i think a nautical mile may you know the nautical mile uh, one nautical mile is equal to the um, 1.852 kilometer of uh, distance so if then you can identify how long and how big that our uh, ocean surface that we below so when you go to the diversity in Sri Lanka, actually there is a good uh, publication uh, available in the, the internet. Actually, you can uh, download this uh, book, ABC Taxa. Actually, it uh, published in 2009, volume six, uh, given you that a lot of uh, information about Sri Lankan seaweeds, the methodologies and the field guide to the dominant species. Actually, this uh, book has been published in before war season and I find uh, this uh, book uh, has not uh, included a lot of uh, information about uh, area about the Jaffna and the northern 
east area and the west uh, east uh, coastal area however they covered a lot of it covered a lot of uh, information about uh, marine uh, seaweeds and other uh, organisms uh, especially marine uh, blue red uh, sorry green red and uh, brown algae uh, which are uh, found uh, in the marine uh, field and sites Uh, it is giving good information for you to understand what are the algae that are available in Sri Lanka, and I find that most of the Sri Lankan algae are not endemic, which are uh, which are found in other uh, geographical area in some somewhere in India, close to South Asia, South Asian countries and the Asia Pacific region. Uh, rather, we really uh, don't see uh, any endemic uh, marine algae in the Sri Lankan border. But actually, this kind of uh, research is being lacking because people are not tend to do a lot of research and taxonomic identification of marine algae. This is sometimes uh, people want to uh, go for that research. Actually, if the investment is there, that you can go and uh, do the research. And uh, according to that literature, that currently we got uh, more than 174 species of marine algae belonging to uh, 34 families and 78 genera. And this record is based on that I think uh, 10, 20 years ago. But I think a recent update is not uh, available in the literature. Uh, but I think it's open to uh, research and discover what kind of algae, a taxonomic uh, method that we can use, molecular taxonomic for them, taxonomic, we can go for and identify them, uh, especially it's a lacking part in Sri Lankan algae. And here, I find some uh, area where we are the, the marine algae hotspot, actually natural habitats available uh, in the Sri Lankan water. Uh, some of my research uh, experiences, we went all the around the coastal areas in Sri Lanka, and we got you know that uh, there are there is a 1,700 uh, kilometer coastal belt in Sri Lanka, and most sites that I highlighted in here uh, with a lot of marine uh, algae. Uh, unfortunately, marine algae are seasonal, so in, because you don't find in every uh, period of the year. You may find some uh, area with uh, marine algae rich, but some area with poor. So a lot of geographical variation there, and a lot of uh, different type of marine algae. And you never go for harvesting directly because I must tell you, based on your research at the moment, you are going to. You are going to collect some of the algae that you are inside and do some research. If you are thinking to do research, so you must go for permission. Otherwise, you won't be uh, collecting marine algae because under the, the FSPO, the Fauna and Flora Protection Order, uh, there's a limitation. You must get the permission from the wildlife department. And always, uh, according to that uh, PPO, uh, it's been protecting, you know, that uh, prevention of using commercialized application, and we want to conserve the uh, marine algae because which are belong to that uh, area where uh, natural uh, natural area like uh, national uh, reserves or sanctuaries. Uh, so must you must uh, go for the permit. Uh, for, you must get the permission, and get, then you can collect. And always you must know that uh, once you have collected, then you do the research or you need to do the um, findings and you must give the credit to the country uh, because uh, once you have the, any technical report, any uh, findings, you uh, submit back to that uh, wildlife department. And then they may uh, identify that where you have collected and why you have collected and what are the, the medicinal or any kind of uh, biological uh, evaluation that you have done, and that will be benefited for the nature. Actually, when the people who use these uh, resources and who may not be credit uh, to the uh, country, uh, they may uh, get, I think, uh, caught, and they, that's why the people misuse. Uh, now, in most of the most of the village areas, uh, uh, coastal area, people are knowing that uh, the value of this marine. Uh, product marine you know uh, okay then they will not allow you to also collect okay let me see that uh, seaweed again marine macroalgae 
So many, many marine microalgae and seaweed are, as I explained, an interesting source for health and uh, food application. And most of them are having uh, antibacterial, antioxidant, anti inflammatory, anti coagulant, and uh, anti cancer activities. And they are used for rich. Uh, they, they are having the rich source of hydrochloric. Actually, uh, in other countries, most of the marine algae are being used uh, for their consumption. And Malaysia, they, they, they use uh, marine algae for their diet. But in Sri Lanka, it's a very rare case. Uh, we directly use marine algae because that much of uh, perfection is not at the moment. But I find sometimes, uh, uh, years uh, later, uh, in Sri Lanka, some uh, people in the fishermen, village people used to uh, consume uh, marine algae, especially Chila area, Puttalam, and Trinko. Uh, one of the marine algae is called Basidaria idealis. So they find that uh, natural uh, marine algae and they bring it to the home and they try to boil with the hot water. So when you get the hot water, it will become, uh, when it allow you to uh, chill down in the or freeze, uh, it will become uh, solid or that you identify as a hydrochloride. This is something like we call agar or kind of uh, polysaccharides available in that marine algae. That's what the people use for their diet. So always hydrochlorides and polysaccharides are very rich in this uh, marine seaweeds, especially green seaweed. They have a high content of hydrochlorides. Uh, I'll go for detail in next slides. And minerals, vitamins, and proteins, and all the rich nutrients are available with seaweeds. And when you go for any uh, kind of food application or any nutraceutical application, uh, you must know the what kind of uh, ingredients are find in this uh, uh, marine, marine food. So the polysaccharides are very common, proteins, peptides or amino acids, fatty acids, pigments, phenolic compounds, minerals. So these are main uh, primary metabolites where you can extract from the marine uh, organisms, especially marine algae, and you can go for uh, each of the applications. So I just go brief on the uh, what are the polysaccharides available. And mostly the, the polysaccharides in seaweeds are very common. Uh, it's around uh, 4 to 70 percent of dry weight. And there are a number of uh, polysaccharides uh, I put in the table, which are called sulfated glucans, means those from green algae, and carrageenans uh, from red algae, and fucodans from brown algae. And these polysaccharides have commercial value, as I explained, that uh, they are hydrophilites, they are uh, absorb water, and they may can use for the, any application like stabilizers, uh, when they use for the emulsifying in the food and the thickening of the food, and especially for the beverage, uh, beverages and kind of uh, ice creams or any type of uh, food preparation, you can use these hydrophilites. Examples are agar. Carotinans, laminarins, and albinic acid. I think we can uh, go further and refer these terms, and we may get good information. And these, most of the polysaccharides are soluble in water, and they are having high, uh, you know, fibery content, and they may uh, promote you to control uh, and maintain your internal uh, gut flora. And that's what uh, the people they use as a prebiotics. Uh, most of the prebiotic, uh, you know, yogurt and uh, milkshakes and some other uh, the, the product they want to develop, they use kind of carotene and agar uh, and associate with this uh, material. So they may expect a lot of benefit out of these uh, natural forms. And uh, one of the good examples is sulfated polysaccharide. I will give you a few examples later. And sulfated galactans also there. Carotene and I explained. Sucodan is uh, one of the uh, my interests also. Until very recently, we got to uh, collect a lot of, uh, you know, the brown algae extracts and we identified uh, Sucodan. And it was very interesting research and people uh, have identified this Sucodan sometimes back, but uh, we try to uh, make some uh, nano complex uh, formulation and Sucodan may do a lot of uh, enhance their activity in terms of uh, anti-cancer research and anti-inflammatory research. And it also, I think you know, so based on the sulfate uh, polysaccharides, way that uh, they, they, they biosynthesized the number of uh, 
you know, cons uh, constructions of disaccharides and the different uh, size of the molecule and the degree of sulfation in the, the, the sulfate polysaccharides are, uh, tend to be uh, their strength and their activity and the uh, application. Uh, so the, you see the number of uh, products that are available in the market. And uh, I think you might uh, go find of this, uh, you know, material to formulate your food, or sometimes when they can develop with this kind of material uh, if you have any success, uh, I mean, uh, desire. So, I will give a small hint uh, how to uh, extract that picodan. Uh, the simple method you can uh, find that the marine uh, sample or marine algae and go for uh, leophilized or we call free sprite sample. And you must uh, dissolve uh, with 10% uh, of formaldehyde in ethanol. So this is uh, the way that this is the way that we want to do pigment. Uh, remove the pigment and other unnecessary materials, the color materials from the marine sample, marine algae especially. And you must uh, go with 95% ethanol and washing, and you remove all the other natural uh, things uh, except of uh, polysaccharides. So then you can employ a kind of research uh, I used here enzyme assisted extraction so a lot of uh, you know seaweed has have thick wall of uh, made out of cellulose so you can break it by cellulase or alkalase kind of uh, carbohydrate enzymes then easily you can digest the cell wall and go into the matrix so matrix uh, available with the, some sort of you know the uh, new things you can bring it out and we need to uh, precipitate the alginic acid which is harmful for this uh, isolation of that picodan. So then finally you can uh, precipitate, ethanolic precipitate and you get the food for separate. Further, you can uh, screen the bioactivity, uh, which the bioactivity is available with this kind of polysaccharides and purification is must because uh, you must uh, go for the uh, different uh, uh, use uh, an an exchange of solvent to purify uh, the fraction and you get uh, picodan which uh, Action and it, you also can go for the uh, characterization of the monosaccharide. Uh, I just put in a table because a few algae samples uh, we been uh, studied a couple of years back. So we find a lot of uh, you know the total soluble carbohydrates you see in this table, the percentage level and polysaccharide contents and sulfate contents and total soluble proteins and total polyphenol contents. I'm not going to uh, detail in that each of that uh, algae, but you see here the main uh, the given uh, one of the algae is residual reduce for high content of polysaccharides, and Unospora minima is one of the uh, our interested uh, marine algae, and it's got high content of sulfate. Actually, the the level of uh, degree of sulfate content will be resulted for their activity. Based on that, we can do a lot of uh, you know research and screening of that uh, kind of compound, where which kind of uh, molecules are there. So the CIR spectra will help you to identify the functionality of this which uh, polysaccharides. Uh, here you see the chemical structure of the dance in the left side. See that uh, polysaccharide molecule, disaccharide actually, and the structure of kepa uh, carotenoid and uh, structure of agarose. So this uh, information might be uh, interesting and important for you to understand. So uh, this same uh, points I've been uh, talking here, because lanarins, alginates, and hydrophyxan also not found from algae, but it's identified from uh, uh, marine uh, sea organisms like uh, crustaceans and arthropods. So, uh, kind of uh, information is here, uh, I will skip at the moment, and we'll go for the uh, next uh, kind of uh, important uh, metabolites called proteins. Proteins are very rich with this uh, marine algae, especially uh, when you consider the marine microalgae, you get high content of proteins, uh, which are very uh, bio, uh, bioavailable proteins, and uh, we can go for the research kind of uh, interest uh, to identify which kind of bioactive peptides available in the port. So you can go for uh, enzyme-assisted extraction to figure out which kind of bioactive peptides in that protein. So mostly microalgae like spirulina, chlorella, 
have a high content of protein, and always they are having high content of essential amino acids as well. And so I give uh, the bottom uh, the link that you can download uh, the paper, uh, which is available, then uh, you can find a lot of information about proteins, peptides, and amino acids where yeah, we can extract from the algae. And here the table also giving you information about uh, each the source of marine algae and proteins or peptides or amino acid availability and the where the biological activity. So next uh, ingredient is fatty acids. Always you may look for the ingredients like fatty acid because uh, the marine organisms are having high content of fatty acids, especially phospholipids and the glycolipids are major classes of lipids find, uh, found in algae. So you may see that uh, the, the term called PUFA, that is called omega-3 and omega-6. Uh, that the PUFA mostly regulates your body function, especially the blood pressure, blood clotting, and you may see that proper development of function of your brain and nervous system and regulating in, in inflammatory responses. I believe that if you find a good uh, nutraceutical application, you must uh, consider the fatty acids which you can extract from the marine algae. Basically, red and brown algae are rich with the omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, examples are alpha-linolic acid and omega-6 uh, fatty acid is uh, also uh, gamma-linolic acid, and uh, along with high level of other oleic acid and palmitic acid. And you realize that uh, the nature of the seaweed and uh, when they are get stressed, uh, you get high content of uh, lipids profile in the uh, sample. Actually, one of the research is being uh, doing uh, the use uh, microorganisms like chlorella, microalgae like chlorella. So we can develop up to 45% of their uh, body uh, content uh, for the fatty acids. So this kind of research is usually uh, involved with the biofuel industry. Uh, people uh, stress and they give some um, you know, molecular genetic, genetical modification for the microalgae, then they get high content of uh, UFA or any other liquid from that uh, tissues. Actually, sometimes you may heard uh, fish oil has high content of omega-3, uh, omega-6. So actually we find that uh, fish, they cannot synthesize themselves for the omega-3 or zip, which always find that uh, marine fishers uh, uh, fed by the marine microalgae that are the precursor for the uh, omega-3 and omega-6 uh, which belong to that mar marine microalgae because the fish you rise to their body and metabolite and then uh, bring, bring it to that uh, body uh, liver actually uh, the cod liver is a very famous omega-3 uh, oil uh, people are you know medical base are very important and the next uh, Next uh, type of uh, ingredients are polyphenols, uh, which are classified as carcinoids kind of treatments, uh, microbial proteins, chlorophylls, and uh, they are very common uh, photosynthetic treatments found in the marine organisms. Uh, in this table, I think you may see uh, the type of treatments uh, and what are the species that they found. Actually, uh, I must tell you the very recently we find in Sri Lankan water, one of the uh, marine algae got a different type of fricosanthin. Actually, first time uh, we identified and isolated that fricosanthin, actually it's a very close relative to fricosanthin. Fricosanthin is a very uh, common um, pigment available in the market and very expensive material for food grade, uh, you know, uh, formulation. And uh, it's a very uh, strong uh, material that you can use for any kind of application, especially it's used anti-cancer, anti-polyphetic effect, and antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So the fricosanthin is very common and uh, it got different type of fricosanthin. It's the first ever recorded in the uh, science. And uh, different uh, microalgae got uh, different uh, pigments with the Undaria pinat saga. Uh, you'll see that centrophil and most of the kind of bacteria, we get uh, fibromyalgia proteins, it's a natural uh, color pigment protein products. And uh, some of the green algae, they contain 
chlorophyll, it's common uh, pigment, and the high content of chlorophyll are there. So you can easily extract and put, uh, get for the food and beverage industry. And uh, these phenolic uh, compounds are very interesting uh, because a lot of researchers are doing research to identify which kind of polyphenols are available in the marine system. Because phenolic compounds are the antioxidants, especially because uh, if you uh, go for this picture, you, go, you see that uh, green tea, you see the catechin, this kind of uh, this structure. Uh, it's a very uh, this number of prints. Uh, and when it goes to uh, reverse power, this is a very common ingredient uh, you find in the wine uh, or when it's uh, from, uh, from the grapes. So the reverse uh, reverse alcohol is uh, having a high antioxidant capacity. But when you see this uh, ring structure, we got high number of uh, uh, molecules, rings, uh, structure, polyphenols, uh, actually phenolic uh, rings that we call polyphenols, and we may tell as the chlorotanin. When you compare the antioxidant activity and capacity, you see the catechin is uh, less than uh, that the chlorotanin when it compares with the scavenging activity. So, a lot of uh, benefit uh, associated with this uh, chlorotanin. There are a lot of papers you may uh, remember that uh, technical term chlorotanin. Uh, so, for a good small, diacol, diacol, and you see that a lot of uh, publication are. Made in that region, and uh, here the carotenoid industry is being increasing. Actually, a lot of uh, carotenoids in the market, and you see uh, it's proportionally very high uh, than compared to the land uh, carotenoids. And these are the main resources for the carotenoids. Uh, because uh, carotenoids is a four-peak carbon uh, skeleton associated with a double bond uh, conjugation and saturated compound. And couple of uh, double bonds, ketones are there. And based on the different uh, arrangement of the uh, carotenoids, you get beta carotene, hypoxine, xanthine, pyrosanthine, astaxanthine, uh, cantoxanthine, lutein. So, a lot of uh, pigments, if you uh, find it in the literature, where this system, you get uh, sometimes some of the uh, carotenoid pigments. I think uh, one gram may uh, do. 100 to 500 uh, USD uh, kind of cost uh, so available for to buy so it, it means you can extract and you can easily sell to the food application so they are mainly uh, considered as antioxidants and they have good source of uh, uh, you know uh, for the disease controlling like oxidative stress these are the kind of uh, you know targeted uh, diseases uh, from the carotenoids. And it's also very important to know that uh, minerals available in the marine system. Uh, here we, uh, I put uh, that soluble calcium and sometimes some sodium, magnesium, iodine also, you know, sometimes uh, thing, uh, nature of that uh, marine algae is essential minerals and that we need uh, and other one is uh, the fish collagen and collagen also not associated with the marine algae but i just put here if you can interest the uh, fish collagen and the gelatin also uh, is the key uh, ingredient uh, for your food uh, application and marine probiotics i think a very common uh, platform here probiotics uh, are living microorganisms which are very beneficial to a to improve your gut bacteria, gut uh, microflora, and associated with a lot of you know benefit. So some of the marine ingredients will enhance your gut flora and recommend you to buy uh, take. And when you have antibiotics, you must uh, have kind of uh, uh, probiotics to improve your gut bacteria. Examples are here. Uh, mostly uh, they contain in yogurt and drinks, uh, and they found in advanced. Uh, they do a advanced uh, health. So here in this slide, I will put some of the algae we collected from our Sri Lankan water. I don't uh, try to name them. Uh, here you can see a lot of uh, red and green uh, marine algae we found in ocean. I think uh, sizes of uh, algae are different, but uh, here I just put a few of examples to uh, 
see and get some information. And what are the importance of the marine uh, algae in Sri Lanka? Actually, sargassum is one of the algae species, actually. Uh, different species are there, but actually, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, scientists we couldn't identify which kind of species are there, but generic name is sargassum. So the, the sargassum are the most common seed, uh, brown seed in Sri Lankan water, and we found in uh, down south and north is, is and some of the fishes and Sri Lankan marine algae has explained that poorly being researched and a lot of information need to be discovered other than we are very struggling to uh, research it because our taxonomic identification is very uh, poor in Sri Lanka so scientists are now interested to see uh, bioactive compounds which are available in the marine algae and uh, target the for many research uh, and the uh, health benefit so let me uh, go a few slides in marine. Uh, I think I took uh, almost one hour at the moment. If I allow uh, to talk a little more, if I, if I can get another 10 minutes. Okay, give me another uh, 10 minutes. I, I uh, finish this uh, lecture. Right. So, marine microalgae is, I think, a very promising uh, a species uh, type of organism uh, at this uh, moment because a lot of uh, space foods, I find uh, a lot of space food, uh, astronaut foods based on marine microalgae. Uh, I say that marine, but uh, it can be grown in the, uh, the fresh water as well. So, however, the microalgae are rich with protein and QSAs and minerals. So they may call single cell proteins because they, when they uh, cultivate in the manipulated environment, you may get a lot of uh, variants, a lot of uh, secondary metabolites uh, synthesized in the um, microalgae body. So they are very useful uh, or potential sources for uh, application. Uh, if I Give you a small uh, introduction of my poor microalgae. They are mostly autotrophic. Autotrophic marine microalgae are mostly they convert solar into chemical energy through the process we know as photosynthesis. And the, some of them are uh, heterotrophic. Why we say the heterotrophic? Because they are used uh, using the organic uh, compounds, organic energy to produce their energy. So some of examples are the Haematococcus salvaris. And kind of monad species, and uh, some uh, microalgae are microtrophic, and which they are uh, producing their, you know, essential uh, growth metabolites using uh, the percent of presence of light or organic compound. Either way, they can use. So, uh, spirulina is one of that uh, microalgae. Uh, the spirulina pertenses uh, or arthropod arthropoida pertenses is same as species. So we see that kind of potential in the microalgae. Uh, you see this picture, uh, I don't uh, go detail, but a lot of benefits are associated with the microalgae. When you extract the microalgae, you get a lot of colorants uh, and you get a lot of uh, good application, nutraceuticals are uh, extracted. And the commercial products like hydrocarbons, like fuel industry, it will not uh, need that uh, need of this uh, lecture, but uh, it's a very uh, different uh, topic uh, forming uh, hydrocarbons, uh, fuel, biofuel using marine microalgae. And some of them are used for the pharmaceuticals, especially genetic modification uh, used to identify this microalgae with, uh, you know, as indicators, especially environmental changes and the pollution uh, changes of the environment will be determined using this microalgae. So the next uh, slide, you will identify that mostly this microalgae uh, cannot be grown uh, in the, you know, uh, in, a, in a type of, you know, laboratories I think it should be there because they find in the water, the scientists must harvest it, uh, you know, pick from the water and they try to scale it up. You may not uh, take as a microscopic things and as it is from the ocean, because not like other macroalgae, you can just go and select 
but this kind of strains are being, you know, identified, then you have to cultivate. So you pick from the cell uh, water and they try to uh, modify all the pits you can uh, use from the strains is to be identified. So then you can uh, profile their product and the potential also be measured and then you go for the scaling up. Scaling up means you can cultivate in a suitable media in a small uh, scale like a, in a test tube. Then you can go uh, once you have grown up to the medium scale you can transfer into the into the bigger volumes then you can go for the point cultivation. So you always want to know that how to cultivate and how to harvest and then the purification. Actually, biofuel industry is very big and you uh, might uh, know already uh, that because the, the open culture system is very common technique that we can grow microalgae, especially from the simplest method. Uh, actually, this is a simplest method and they're very cost effective and you can require large space and uh, uh, you can get Sunlight energy easily, and the carbon dioxide from the disadvantage as well because you may get easily contaminated with other kind of microorganisms. So you can't desire a uh, type of specific microorganism cannot be cultured in kind of this. This kind of open cultivation is used for biofuel industry, so not for the food trade or any pharmaceutical industry. However, the post cultivation system, or we call proper bioreactors, specially designed uh, type of uh, mechanism available in the uh, laboratories and the industries to cultivate different uh, microalgae. So, type of uh, each type of microalgae can be uh, grown in different uh, setup, and you see the different sizes, different uh, volumes of the proto uh, bioreactors available. And easily manipulate with the system and such a chemical condition can be controlled and measured and you can uh, improve that uh, purity and the harvest of the microalgae. And very common uh, pond cultivation used in Sri Lanka, uh, Sirun and Florida. Actually, I must tell you in this picture, uh, in Sri Lanka army, agriculture farming very hard. Good place that we are the marine civilized cultivation. So the ponds open pond cultivation is there. You can see that how we collect and uh, collect and uh, see that how we filter and get the uh, spiruna uh, form of spiruna uh, slurry. And here the harvest will be uh, important because they may work in a research purposes. And uh, recently I find that uh, they uh, developed a new procedural product. Uh, called Spruna cookies. Actually, they tested and they got the quality certificate and they maintained the quality assurance and they, I think, uh, they use for their uh, army crops. So, uh, and then, uh, I think uh, they have used a uh, different uh, flour, like a uh, traditional rice flour, incorporated with the Spruna uh, powder and they valued it and they marketed and uh, the technology is available at Sri Lanka. And I want I want to how to purify and how to extract the uh, microalgae. Uh, you know that I will give you the link uh, at the end of this presentation. You can download this paper and you may uh, uh, extraction process will be done. And I try to give here the functional foods. I think you can uh, search on what are the functional foods. And nutraceutical foods actually they they are very common ground here because uh, you all are in a same competition so you must know how to develop functional food or how to develop nutraceutical which, which may be you know, the product uh, isolate from the original sample or you may purify it and you may uh, generally make into a medicinal form and associate with other food and it kind of dietary supplement and you give you the Health benefit definitely it must have a health benefit and uh, should not toxic and should not uh, poison to anyone that it consumes. So it can be a uh, such of pills that 
tablet of powder which I and because I find that uh, the space for the main task, uh, main target is to uh, on the Spirulina. Actually, Spirulina is the one of the safest food uh, ever recorded, and with high content of nutrition, proteins, uh, all essential amino acids, minerals are there because it's classified as a safest food. And if we also approve, and NASA uh, use this Spirulina to uh, use their, uh, their, their, their food applications. And what the, the important aspect is, it's got high content of protein, uh, more than 40 to 70 percent of proteins, uh, and it has a lot of other minerals. Uh, it has all other vitamins. I put in here the in, if you take in terms of uh, one gram, uh, seven grams of tin uh, tablespoon, it gives a lot of uh, you know nutrients. And, and we. and uh, 1.1 grams of digestible carbohydrate. And usually, uh, a standard daily dose set compared to uh, chicken or beef, you get lesser than the protein compared to the spuma. And different kind of form and formulations are available in the nature. I think I will not do uh, what uh, try to get, guide you that you may have open uh, interest to do whatever you want. So kind of uh, microalgae uh, powdered kind of capsule and energy bars and drink beverage and some kind of Nuri. If you can uh, remember uh, the name of this uh, film is called Nuri or in Korean we call Kim. Uh, Nuri is from the Japanese. It's a special type of processed food uh, using uh, green algae. Uh, basically, they use uh, porphyra uh, species. And Sri Lanka also, some of the university uh, students, they have developed uh, using ulva species. In Sri Lanka, we find a lot of uh, ulva, green algae, develop this kind of uh, dried food. And it's always, uh, you know, palatable. And you can easily transport uh, you know, it can keep long time because it's, it has less moisture and high nutrient. And one of the uh, important uh, aspects, what I tell you, uh, you can go for any kind of uh, marine uh, algae and extract, try to extract and do a formulation as you expect. Uh, that is freedom for you to uh, see. And very recently, the NASA has been doing the research uh, how to uh, grow algae, especially in the uh, space actually they don't want to bring because a lot of uh, the space foods are common as uh, in the plant of earth because they use uh, dried fruits dried uh, vegetables and some of them are vacuum packed uh, and remove the water and some are frozen foods so most of them are very uh, same as our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, meal and foods so what they want to emphasize they are because they want to grow their own food at the space. So they are trying to experiment and research and some of the, uh, the microalgae, especially kind of strains, they want to, uh, in the late link, you can go and see, uh, they uh, provide the carbon dioxide, they, are, they want to recycle carbon dioxide inside the space shuttle and they want to give water uh, minimum and then they try to uh, go cultivate uh, school nine in the uh, veggie packets like this. And some of the other last few slides, I think, uh, some of the bad uh, sector in this slide I will show you. Uh, what are the challenges may you have encountered with, when you, uh, uh, in order to do the research? Because a lot of uh, Sri Lankan marine uh, organisms, uh, especially marine algae, when I research, I find a lot of, uh, you know, metal ion associated with there because uh, based on the research I did, uh, I find a lot of heavy metal, uh, nickel, chromium, cadmium, and sometimes mercury also I found uh, in marine algae. So it's a very uh, disadvantage at this point, but I'm not uh, encouraged you to uh, go for, I'm not encouraged to kind of, uh, you know, research do and come with the good source of marine algae because when you try to formulate anything that should not 
have with uh, metal ions because uh, uh, shortly uh, the, the, the metals or debris, I mean, metals means like uh, heavy metals, but uh, based on the, our debris, marine based uh, solid material that we dumped are manufactured in or processed in the land and directly or indirectly, inten intentionally or unintentionally we dispose and then end up in the ocean. Most of the consumable you know, plastics and metals we use, rubbers, paper, textiles, and any material we you see within picture. So all they contain high content of, you know, the toxic, uh, you know, metals, uh, microplastics, serious problems are uh, damaging the environment. So be cautious on the marine sample when you collect because it should not with this uh, metal line or any other uh, debris or associated with other chemical. Uh, in Sri Lanka, we see that uh, the number of plastics uh, waste tons per year that we uh, dump to the ocean, there's Sri Lanka in fifth place. And see the a lot of waste to the ocean. So it's a, a point that you can understand. And easily you see that uh, nature, uh, a lot of microplastics are collected because when you put a plastic, it will be digest and get the microplastic that will be end up in the soup lantern because uh, one of the research papers find here that soup lantern uh, got uh, digested with the uh, microplastics and actually the the research behind that marine algae how the soup uh, how the soup lanterns are like this but uh, because they have eaten and they got uh, plastic into their body but marine uh, algae. Actually, we don't have that much of knowledge and research publications uh, where that uh, might pass it involved or any uh, damage to the marine uh, algae or their uh, health. So that is a lacking of in research. So most of them are uh, pesticides, uh, fungicides, heavy metals uh, are in the marine surfaces or this way it here that uh, one of the paper I find uh, that published by the NARA uh, heavy metal heavy mercury level in the Sri Lankan water. So I think I would I will stop at the moment. Uh, basically, what I wanted to give you some uh, insight knowledge about the marine biotechnology and uh, available sources and the opportunity where you can use and the some of the challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Harper Samar Khan. And uh, dear audience, we will, we will be taking a screenshot. So it would be great to turn on your uh, web cameras uh, in the later of this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions regarding this session or the previous one, you, uh, you can uh, put them in the chat box uh, or you can. Uh, Yes, sir. There are some questions in the chat box. Uh, the first question, what is the legal situation or procedure for collecting these samples for academic or research purposes? Okay, uh, you must uh, you must uh, put a small request or proposal to the wildlife department and saying that which kind of uh, algae you are going to collect. Actually, you can't put all the number of uh, seaweeds uh, you are wish to collect they will not allow you to collect any material unless that you uh, point out and you the specific uh, marine algae or marine uh, samples actually microalgae you won't be able to collect here uh, it can be available in anywhere but uh, in, if you target a macroalgae or seaweeds you must give the specific uh, details of the, the algae that you are going to collect so the application form is uh, available in the internet and you can download and you have to go through your academics, uh, you know, the head of the, your division or head of the institution and go uh, through the channel, then they will consider at least one or two months, they will take to uh, evaluate that your request and allow you to, if the satisfy, if the information has been satisfied, then they will allow you to collect that. You will get a particular period to collect and then they, you can go uh, inform to the wildlife uh, office uh, near to the collecting site, especially Hikaru, you can find, simply you can find 
just like you can find the, the wildlife office you inform them to okay you have authorized copy uh, the approval here uh, permission to collect then uh, allow them to uh, help you then they will uh, also allow you to collect samples and definitely must, you must know that once you have done something research uh, give the credit to the uh, sri lanka because uh, once you have finding the research report or any publication you've done uh, go uh, submit to that uh, submit with the request letter uh, which you got and uh, say that this is the finding that we uh, finding that we got from the uh, sample that that will be enough you to uh, you know uh, do the country uh, that is the way uh, and otherwise uh, you will not be able to collect and you have to know that MIPA, Marine Environment Protection Authority, is a governing body in Sri Lanka and coastal, uh, coastal Guard Department and uh, NARA, uh, National uh, Resources, uh, Aquatic Resources for Research and Development Agency, and uh, NAGDA also in Sri Lanka, NAGDA for the uh, land, water, and the terrestrial uh, aquatic organisms, and NARA for uh, especially either uh, more actually both uh, marine and the freshwater uh, or organizations uh, or institutions available in Sri Lanka you must consult them and you get uh, easily information uh, on how to uh, do this kind of uh, you know research yes. and sir uh, is there any seaweed species that can be cultivated in an aquaponic system yeah uh, actually I also tried uh, once in a small Scale, but uh, it wasn't success because you must find the good the media to uh, cultivate. Uh, it's a very difficult because you won't find the literature that uh, facilitation how to uh, cultivate that uh, kind of aquatic plant in the uh, laboratory scale. So it's a challenging uh, activity. Actually, you may find a lot of uh, difficulties when you find the media. I mean, culture, uh, the media, liquid media. If you can success, you definitely can go and also that kind of physiochemical, uh, you know, parameter must be measured and then uh, it will be success. But I find that I might uh, again post it. Yeah, uh, and uh, does Sri Lanka have sufficient raw materials for this? Uh, this is another thing that because in Sri Lanka geographically, uh, you know, the land uh, area, you know, that but the coastal area you get, uh, uh, you get not like other countries, like aquaculture system in developed in other countries, they facilitate to uh, grow uh, aquatic plants like marine algae. They, they have smooth, uh, you know, rough, not rough waves, uh, smooth uh, climate and not a stressed environment to cultivate the marine uh, organisms. But in Sri Lanka, you might see that uh, big waves and rough waves are disturbing that uh, cultivation of industry. It is not uh, easy to cultivate aqua, you know, marine algae in the uh, Sri Lankan Ocean, but somewhere in the Delft and somewhere that uh, Jaffna Peninsula, you will find a good, uh, you know, geographical area. But in Nara and other uh, institutions must uh, look for that uh, how to cultivate. But uh, practically, it's a very challenging again. Uh, you won't find the good uh, geographical area to cultivate the marine algae, and uh, that gives you that you know the raw material are very uh, insufficient because uh, when you go for the collecting uh, you know marine uh, samples, fresh forms, and uh, that will not happen because uh, you must go for the wildlife officers and their institutions. They will not allow you to collect a lot. Uh, that is a sustainability uh, you know failing in Sri Lanka in terms of marine research. So uh, what kind of procedures will decrease the nutrition level of the algae? And if so, how to avoid it? Uh, I don't uh, understand little, uh, on that uh, the nutrition level is already in there because you the way that you want to extract, uh, you have to keep with the nutrition level because sometimes uh, if you are thinking about uh, uh, antioxidant capacity of that uh, sample you must not heat uh, extract uh, because you use the solvent extraction you use uh, enzyme acid extraction and uh, kind of uh, method or technique you can use but you should avoid heating heating that material if need it will be it, uh, damage their uh, capacity of antioxidant uh, material that available or any other uh, potential that be available so you must not 
uh, heat unnecessary and you try to figure out uh, what the best method to extract the nutrient of the uh, algae yes uh, and uh, can we use spirulina or ulva to produce protein capsules with a low yeah. cost yeah yeah you, that that is available actually sri lanka one of uh, few companies imported spirulina from uh, thailand and you can find the spirulina uh, you know cultivation i think uh, you can start you can home uh, level you you can start the cultivation of spirulina uh, internet will give all the support if i also can support uh, the way of the spirulina cultivation is not very big deal but ulva is uh, not a simple way that ulva is a macro algae you must go for the ocean and aquaculture system but spirulina you can cultivate uh, on and it will be uh, low cost uh, production and the capsule also the capsulation also available because it is a small instrument you can buy from, buy from the market Uh, capsulation uh, jelly type of you know capsules can be uh, filled with uh, spirulina powder and you can easily uh, market yes thank you sir and uh, at last but not least i invite our vice chairperson of neofora organizing committee and the organizing project manager of uh, seds oysl mr kanushka fernando Uh, to deliver the word of thanks thanks uh, thank you rukshani um first of all i want to thank uh, guest speaker today uh, dr kalpur um i can see that uh, you put in a lot of effort into this uh, to teach us something new so i want to thank you for that and um for those who uh, don't know dr kalpa uh he has done a lot of studies in uh, anti cancer research and uh, as well as cosmetics using uh, algae so um if you want to look uh, beautiful and uh, if you want if you're interested in the subject i urge you to uh, read his uh, journals online so thank you again uh, dr kalpa for uh, being with us today um and uh, second of all um, i want to thank uh, my team the said uh, society of the open university of sri lanka uh, there's a huge team behind me even though i'm the one who's uh, given the word of thanks uh, the 30 people com- committee as well as uh, hundreds of members uh, so um, you guys have worked hard i'm really proud of you and uh, especially uh, the juniors um very proud of you guys uh keep up the good work and uh, finally i'd like to um thank the audience uh for being here i know there's a lot of um, people from other unis from other schools uh as well as other countries uh joining us internationally so thank you for being here i hope uh, today was fruitful for you and if you have any ideas suggestions um or if you'd like us to do more webinars please just uh let us know in the chat box or through um our fb page sets usl and if you'd like to even join the society just uh, drop us a message on uh, sets usl on facebook and uh, we'll be more than happy to get back to you so uh Thanks again everybody and um, over to you Rukshani. Um and now I invite you to uh turn on your cameras to capture this moment. Okay. Uh thank you all for uh your cooperation. And uh, 
Um, stay tuned. This new for our event will go on, and uh, I wish you good luck. And thank you all for participating in this event. Thank you, and have a good day.